Day 125. 1 Kings 19-20. Now Ahab told Jezebel everything that Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. So Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah, saying, May the gods deal with me, and ever so severely, if by this time tomorrow I do not make your life like the lives of those you killed. And Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. When he came to Beersheba in Judah, he left his servant there, while he himself traveled on a day's journey into the wilderness. He sat down under a broom tree and prayed that he might die. I have had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life, for I am no better than my father's. Then he lay down under the broom tree and fell asleep. Suddenly an angel touched him and said, Get up and eat. And he looked around, and there by his head was a cake of bread baked over hot coals, and a jar of water. So he ate and drank and lay down again. A second time the angel of the Lord returned and touched him, saying, Get up and eat, or the journey will be too much for you. So he got up and ate and drank. And strengthened by that food, he walked forty days and forty nights until he reached Horeb, the mountain of God. There Elijah entered a cave and spent the night. And the word of the Lord came to him, saying, What are you doing here, Elijah? I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, he replied, but the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I am the only one left, and they are seeking my life as well. Then the Lord said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord. Behold, the Lord is about to pass by. And a great and mighty wind tore into the mountains and shattered the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake there was a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a still, small voice. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his cloak and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. Suddenly a voice came to him and said, What are you doing here, Elijah? I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, he replied, but the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I am the only one left, and they are seeking my life as well. Then the Lord said to him, Go back by the way you came, and go to the desert of Damascus. When you arrive, you are to anoint Hazael as king over Aram. You are also to anoint Jehu son of Nimshi as king over Israel and Elisha son of Shaphat from Abel Meholah to succeed you as prophet. Then Jehu will put to death whoever escapes the sword of Hazael, and Elisha will put to death whoever escapes the sword of Jehu. Nevertheless, I have reserved seven thousand in Israel, all whose knees have not bowed to Baal and whose mouths have not kissed him. So Elijah departed and found Elisha son of Shaphat. He was plowing with twelve teams of oxen, and he was with the twelfth team. Elijah passed by him and threw his cloak around him. So Elisha left the oxen, ran after Elijah, and said, Please let me kiss my father and mother goodbye, and then I will follow you. Go on back, Elijah replied, for what have I done to you? So Elisha turned back from him, took his pair of oxen, and slaughtered them. With the oxen's equipment, he cooked the meat and gave it to the people, and they ate. Then he set out to follow and serve Elijah. Now Ben-Hadad king of Aram assembled his entire army. Accompanied by thirty-two kings with their horses and chariots, he marched up, besieged Samaria, and waged war against it. Then he sent messengers into the city to Ahab king of Israel, saying, This is what Ben-Hadad says, Your silver and gold are mine, and your best wives and children are mine. And the king of Israel replied, Just as you say, My lord the king, I am yours, along with all that I have. The messengers came back and said, This is what ben Hadid says, I have sent to you to demand your silver, your gold, your wives, and your children. But about this time tomorrow I will send my servants to search your palace and the houses of your servants. They will seize and carry away all that is precious to you. Then the king of Israel summoned all the elders of the land and said, Please take note and see that this man is looking for trouble, for when he demanded my wives, my children, my silver, and my gold. I did not deny him. And the elders and the people all said, Do not listen to him or consent to his terms. So Ahab answered the messengers of ben Hadid, Tell my lord the king, All that you demanded of your servant the first time I will do. But this thing I cannot do. So the messengers departed and relayed the message to ben Hadid. Then ben Hadid sent another message to Ahab, May the gods deal with me, And ever so severely, If enough dust remains of Samaria for each of my men to have a handful. And the king of Israel replied, 
Tell him, the one putting on his armor should not boast like one taking it off. Ben Hadad received this message while he and the kings were drinking in their tents, and he said to his servants, Take your positions. So they stationed themselves against the city. Meanwhile a prophet approached Ahab king of Israel and declared, This is what the Lord says, Do you see this entire great army? Behold, I will deliver it into your hand this very day, and you will know that I am the Lord. By whom? Ahab asked. And the prophet replied, This is what the Lord says, by the young officers of the district governors. Who will start the battle? Asked Ahab. You will, answered the prophet. So Ahab assembled the young officers of the district governors, and there were two hundred and thirty-two men. And after them, he assembled the rest of the Israelite troops, seven thousand in all. They marched out at noon while Ben-Hadad and the thirty-two kings allied with him were in their tents getting drunk. And the young officers of the district governors marched out first. Now Ben-Hadad had sent out scouts, who reported to him, Men are marching out of Samaria. If they have marched out in peace, he said, Take them alive. Even if they have marched out for war, take them alive. Meanwhile, these young officers of the district governors marched out of the city, with the army behind them, and each one struck down his opponent. So the Arameans fled, with the Israelites in pursuit. But Ben-Hadad king of Aram escaped on horseback with the cavalry. Then the king of Israel marched out and attacked the horses and chariots, inflicting a great slaughter on the Arameans. Afterward, the prophet approached the king of Israel and said, Go, and strengthen your position, and take note what you must do, for in the spring the king of Aram will come up against you. Meanwhile, the servants of the king of Aram said to him, Their gods are gods of the hills. That is why they prevailed over us. Instead, we should fight them on the plains, surely then we will prevail. So do this, dismiss all the kings from their positions and replace them with other officers. And you must raise an army like the one you have lost, horse for horse and chariot for chariot, so we can fight the Israelites on the plain, where we will surely prevail. And the king approved their plan and acted accordingly. In the spring, Ben-Hadad mobilized the Arameans and went up to effect a fight against Israel. The Israelites also mobilized, gathered supplies, and marched out to meet them. The Israelites camped before them like two small flocks of goats, while the Arameans covered the countryside. Then the man of God approached the king of Israel and said, this is what the Lord says, because the Arameans think the Lord is a God of the hills and not of the valleys, I will deliver all this great army into your hand. Then you will know that I am the Lord. For seven days the armies camped opposite each other, and on the seventh day the battle ensued, and the Israelites struck down the Arameans, a hundred thousand foot soldiers in one day. The rest of them fled into the city of Aphek, where the wall fell on twenty-seven thousand of the remaining men. Ben-Hadad also fled to the city and hid in an inner room. Then the servants of Ben-Hadad said to him, Look now, we have heard that the kings of the house of Israel are merciful. Let us go out to the king of Israel with sackcloth around our waists and ropes around our heads. Perhaps he will spare your life. So with sackcloth around their waists and ropes around their heads, they went to the king of Israel and said, Your servant Ben-Hadad says, Please spare my life. And the king answered, Is he still alive? He is my brother. Now the men were looking for a sign of hope, and they quickly grasped at this word and replied, Yes, your brother Ben-Hadad. Go and get him. Said the king. Then Ben-Hadad came out, and Ahab had him come up into his chariot. Ben-Hadad said to him, I will restore the cities my father took from your father, you may set up your own marketplaces in Damascus, as my father did in Samaria. By this treaty I release you, Ahab replied. So he made a treaty with him and sent him away. Meanwhile, by the word of the Lord, one of the sons of the prophets said to his companion, Strike me, please. But the man refused to strike him. Then the prophet said to him, Because you have not obeyed the voice of the Lord, as soon as you depart from me a lion will kill you. And when he left, a lion found him and killed him. Then the prophet found another man and said, Strike me, please. So the man struck him and wounded him, and the prophet went and waited on the road for the king, disguising himself with a bandage over his eyes. As the king passed by, he cried out to the king, Your servant had marched out into the middle of the battle, when suddenly a man came over with a captive and told me, Guard this man. If he goes missing for any reason, your life will be exchanged for his life, or you will weigh out a talent of silver. But while your servant was busy here and there, the man disappeared. And the king of Israel said to him, 
so shall your judgment be, you have pronounced it on yourself. Then the prophet quickly removed the bandage from his eyes, and the king of Israel recognized him as one of the prophets. And the prophet said to the king, This is what the Lord says, because you have let slip from your hand the man I had devoted to destruction, your life will be exchanged for his life, and your people for his people. Sullen and angry, the king of Israel went home to Samaria. Luke 23 verses 1 to 25. Then the whole council rose and led Jesus away to Pilate. And they began to accuse him, saying, We found this man subverting our nation, forbidding payment of taxes to Caesar, and proclaiming himself to be Christ, a king. So Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? You have said so, Jesus replied. Then Pilate said to the chief priests and the crowds, I find no basis for a charge against this man. But they kept insisting, he stirs up the people all over Judea with his teaching. He began in Galilee and has come all the way here. When Pilate heard this, he asked if the man was a Galilean. And learning that Jesus was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who himself was in Jerusalem at that time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was greatly pleased. He had wanted to see him for a long time, because he had heard about him and was hoping to see him perform a miracle. Herod questioned Jesus at great length, but he gave no answer. Meanwhile, the chief priests and scribes stood there, vehemently accusing him. And even Herod and his soldiers ridiculed and mocked him. Dressing him in a fine robe, they sent him back to Pilate. That day Herod and Pilate became friends, before this time they had been enemies. Then Pilate called together the chief priests, the rulers, and the people, and said to them, You brought me this man as one who was inciting the people to rebellion. I have examined him here in your presence and found him not guilty of your charges against him. Neither has Herod, for he sent him back to us. As you can see, he has done nothing deserving of death. Therefore I will punish him and release him. But they all cried out in unison, Away with this man. Release Barabbas to us. Barabbas had been imprisoned for an insurrection in the city, and for murder. Wanting to release Jesus, Pilate addressed them again, but they kept shouting, Crucify him. Crucify him. A third time he said to them, What evil has this man done? I have found in him no offense worthy of death. So after I punish him, I will release him. But they were insistent, demanding with loud voices for Jesus to be crucified. And their clamor prevailed. So Pilate sentenced that their demand be met. As they had requested, he released the one imprisoned for insurrection and murder, and handed Jesus over to their will. 